Greetings, everyone. I know you're ready for turkey. I know I am. I haven't had any since last well, Thanksgiving. <laughs> actually, I haven't had any since lunch yesterday. <laughs> But not a nice hot turkey. Anyway, thank you for joining <laughs> us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Uh, we have a wonderful guest, Tracy Rury, with I forgot the name of Note her company investor. now. Note Investor. <laughs> anyway, she's awesome, um, and she will be here right after this brief moment of silence. <laughs> We were just joking about how I hate silence. <laughs> so thank you again for joining us on the real estate investors show. Hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina capital management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. So if you're interested in borrowing money, go to carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the apply now tab. If you are a passive investor looking for passive returns, go to the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. And for goodness sakes, don't forget Wednesdays with Wendy. That makes me just seem super cool, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Get your air guitar. That's right. So Wendy gives up 30 minutes per person. Uh, on Wednesdays uh, to talk about anything real estate. So sign up. There's her Calendly link. She's usually booked out a couple of months in yeah. advance. January 19th right. are the next openings at this point. So once again, this is November and it's all about the women. So, well, man, take it away. <laughs> <laughs> that was really a great opening there, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> Folks, we are so excited to have Tracy here with us. Tracy, welcome to our show. Um, I have so many things I want to share with you today. I'm excited to be here. It's always a good time. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. You know, I'm trying to remember the first time I ever met you. It was by email, of course. Um, and it was three to four years ago before COVID. It was before COVID, you know, everything's blank before then. <laughs> and you and your husband do a um, online event. And I remember getting an email about this online event, thinking in my head, how in the world will this online event work? There's no way it's going to work. <laughs> it was the best event we were ever on. And wow. We were That's saying a lot. Well, it was, it, it's just awesome. So I, I, I really want to share with people about, first of all, how you even got into that. I want to hear a little bit about your business, what you're doing. And then I want to talk about the wise women stuff that you're doing. Well, excellent. Thanks for having me. Uh, we got to meet in person too at Quest, I think the Quest event. So that's always yes. fun when you meet people online, then later you get to meet them in person. That's right. So I've been buying and selling seller financed real estate notes since 1988. So that was my introduction to the note business. And I started out in the closing and processing side and then moved into the underwriting. And then I quickly found out that the money was made on the investing side. So mm -hmm. I was fortunate enough to do that for 10 years with an institutional investor. And then I went out on my own and my husband and I started a company in 97 where we buy and sell real estate notes, seller finance notes. So we've been doing that, you know, what, 30 plus years now, I've been focused on that seller finance niche. And uh, it's been good to us. And we are fortunate to be able to share some of that knowledge with others. One thing I always like to mention is seller financing is actually a pretty large segment of the market. Last year alone, we tracked these stats. There was 23.5 billion with a B created in wow. seller finance notes. So if you're thinking it's just some small piece of the market, I mean, of course that's small compared to the whole market, but it's <laughs> big enough, right? To, to do some profitable investments with. And it's, it's another side, like hard money's one side, Seller financing is another way to raise capital. Sometimes people like to buy and then sell with seller financing. There's some benefits to that as well. It's mm -hmm. another way to earn interest income and be the bank. So how did Dodd-Frank affect you guys? Because that's really what the bulk of what you were doing at the time when that occurred, right? 
Right. So if anybody listening, Dodd-Frank was some legislation that was implemented in 2014 as a response to the subprime mortgage debacle meltdown problem. <laughs> yeah. And we won't even go into that, right? So, right. <laughs> uh, so they did decide to protect consumers. And in that uh, ba baby with the bathwater, there were some seller financing transactions also included. They did keep in some exemptions between one and three and 12 months, which is good for the mom and pop sellers, meaning somebody who only creates under three a year. But for people who are creating more than that a year, it did put some additional burdens on us. Now we buy seller finance notes after they're created. A big segment of the market are those mom and pop sellers. So we break those numbers down in the stats we track as well. So still a big segment of market falls in some exemptions, but there's also a segment that's the professional seller, seller financier, and they were very affected by this. So when, when it first came in, we're like, okay, fine. We're just, we're going to put our heads in the sand. We're not going to deal with this. We're just going to buy notes that were created <laughs> pre 2014. Well, that were last like how long, right? At some point you <laughs> run out of inventory. So then we're like, all right, we're going to figure this out. So what, we suggest to people as there are mortgage loan originators, MLOs, or some people call them RMLOs, residential mm -hmm. mortgage loan originators that understand how to qualify a buyer, a borrower, to make sure they meet the ability to repay provision for an owner occupied home. This doesn't apply to investor properties. And they will document that up and paper it up to make sure that the proper disclosures are done as well. There's other things you have to worry about in your state, like SAFE Act and that sort of thing. But that has been one approach. And at the end of the day, it's really created better paper that's more marketable, both from a collection point of view and from a resale point of view, if you ever want to resell your paper. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Now, you say it's more marketable, but has it really made a difference? Can you tell the difference? <laughs> from from notes prior to 14 to after? I don't see the difference from people who already were doing it that way. We tended to make sure people could <laughs> qualify to pay. It sort of makes sense, right? It's always a plus. <laughs> it's nice and to I, make a loan and know that you're going to get paid back. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that's always nice. <laughs> and it did make a little bit of a difference. Uh, like we were used to documenting. That's my background. So I understood the documents. But for people who didn't, I think it forced some people who maybe were operating a little uh, willy nilly, fast and loose. I was thinking something <laughs> like that. Yeah, uh, I think it did force them into uh, papering it up and qualifying a little bit better. So for the rest of us that were already doing that, it, it was just more burden. But that's all right. You adapt, you move on, you figure it out. That's awesome. Do you have institutional investors that are buying up uh, the seller of finance and papers and paper? And if that's the case, are they using that as a tool to buy them at a discount if they haven't been originated from a loan officer? That is a very good point. Yes, there there's institutional paper, uh, bank paper that will buy this and they do check to see if it meets an exemption. And if it doesn't, if it's been papered up, appropriately and they may say no if it hasn't or they may uh, pay a different price so yeah very insightful that is happening out there it's a big market for the private investor too i mean a lot of this paper gets placed with self-directed ira money self-directed 401k money so all of those sorts of things awesome so so from that from how did you and your husband start the online event that you guys are doing talk a little bit about that well, we like to travel, so it was a little bit self-serving because we wanted <laughs> to set up our business so we could do it from anywhere. And we attended a lot of events live and hosted them, and we just felt like the technology was there. I got to give a lot of credit to Fred because he's very technology savvy. And so we just saw some different people doing that in different industries, and we said, oh, I think we can do this for the cash flow industry, for the people that are buying and selling cash flows like real estate notes. And uh, yeah, this will be the fourth year coming up in February. We're excited to have it. And uh, this, we just had our second year. We did something similar. 
uh, with Wise Women Investors, where we featured uh, just female speakers. So that's sort of uh, that spawned off of that. So Cashflow Expo, just for anybody who doesn't know, it's actually free to attend. And then it's three days of really great speakers like yourselves, like Wendy and Bill and everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they, they don't sell. They're, they educate. That's one of our qualifications to be a speaker. And we then uh, do sell VIP upgrade tickets that people can come in and watch the recordings and get the downloads uh, at their leisure, whenever they want. So free to attend live. And if you want the VIP recordings, um, then we make those. And then that's all male and female, all different aspects of cash flow, passive income. And then from that, we focused on the fall on all female investors. And that's two days. And we do something similar. And what's funny is, you're focusing on female investors, but you have a lot of male investors that attend that wise women. In fact, I just got an email this morning from a guy that was on it that was asking me questions that had heard me speak. Um, <laughs> I love that. Yes, that men are allowed. It's not no men allowed. Men are allowed. It that's was right. <laughs> It's a platform to focus on some female speakers. Now, we did this for two reasons. It's kind of a passion project. I did the two reasons. I know you're going to focus on women this month, so I'll, I'll bring this up. One, I would go to these conventions and there would be very few female speakers. I know Wendy, you speak, very, very few of us. And often we get stuck on a panel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so I just felt like there's so many women in this real estate investing, hard money lending, note buying that uh, would really, we'd all benefit from them having a platform to share their knowledge. The second reason I did that was I think other women become more comfortable investing if they see other women doing that. And they think if, if they did it, I can too. So that was my twofold reason for, for doing that. And Fred encouraged me a lot. And he, you know, they're behind, as they say, behind every woman, there's a, 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 a behind every man, there's a woman. Well, and when it comes to this technology stuff behind this woman is a man helping me get it done. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. How many people did you have for the, the wise men, women? So the wise women expo, I think we had just under a thousand registered. We get about 2,500 to 3000 for the cash flow expo. And I think that is about, I don't know that's probably what I see when I go speak at different conventions is we're probably 30 to 40%. I would you say in an audience, you go to these, yeah. what do you think, Wendy? 30 to 40% yeah. female in the audience? Yeah, I Absolutely. I agree. And, and I'm, I'm just amazed that you have in such a short period of time, that many followers on yeah. this, it's, it's just amazing. So if somebody wanted to get a recording of the wise women, how could they do that? Oh, uh, you could go to wisewomenexpo.com and those recordings are available. The other site is cashflowexpo.com. So in addition to our noteinvestor.com, we also have dedicated URLs, right, to each of the events. Right. And Wise Women is W-I-Z-E, right? Yes, because yes, I'm awesome. Tracy Z. It was kind of my fun play. <laughs> but I did buy both URLs. So if you spell it wrong, you'll still get there. <laughs> <laughs> that was smart. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention too, is I believe you are uh, speaking um, at the Quest Con coming up in December. And I, are you and I on a panel together? I hope we are because we always have some fun, don't we? That's for sure. That's I don't know sure. if we are or not. I know they have several panels going on. Well, I'm I'm really, really looking forward to that event. I think it'll be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So um, what's Fred been up to lately? What what's his <laughs> what what's his uh uh don't look at me. What I'm do you just call it? Pretty. <laughs> <laughs> what is it that trips his trigger in the real estate world? <laughs> I know really, what it is personally. It's you. <laughs> he really loves uh, implementing the tools, the technology side in the business to make things simpler. So from uh, getting the note investor leads, getting the sellers of notes, uh, the technology, the website, the we call them funnels, like the sequencing that when people sign up to get information, how they are 
provided additional information. So he really helps a lot with that. And uh, and he ran the phone on the buying side for years and years and years. And he is an amazing negotiator. I think, he, you know, you do that for so long. And so he still loves note investing, but he spends a lot of time on the uh, technology side of it for That's us. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Tracy, I do have a question. Yeah. I know that Not just interest rates are... <laughs> Interest rates are really low. Yeah. Why would anyone uh, need or want to get owner financing in such a low rate environment? They don't all qualify. That's a great question. And the answer really is, is there somebody you call a penalty box buyer? They are still a good credit risk, but for whatever reasons, they don't dot all the I's and cross all the T's of a conventional lender. And if you look at the mortgage affordability index and the mortgage availability index, it's interesting. There's all this inexpensive money out there, but the criteria to qualify for it is actually more restrictive right now than it has been in the past. Now, because rates are lower, the payment is lower. So that does make them qualify a little easier. But as far as down payment mm -hmm. and credit scores, those are actually more restrictive right now than they have been. Now, I understand why nobody wants another subprime meltdown like 2000, right. 2010. So I get it. Mm -hmm. But what that means is we actually see people who don't have 20% down or maybe they have a 650 credit score and they're, they're still a good candidate uh, and they would be willing to buy for a little bit higher interest rate with seller financing. Then they can get whatever issues, they can build equity if that was down payment issue or they can clean up whatever was on their credit and then maybe refinance later at those lower rates when they become conventional again. The other part of it is there's a lot of people out there that are investors and after they get, you know, four or five, uh, regular conventional loans, it gets harder for that. And so they obviously make great uh, candidates for hard money lenders as well, but they also can make great candidates for buying with seller financing. Yeah. And you're self-employed folks that yeah. uh, can't show all their income on a tax return. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I also want to get to the side of if you are a real estate investor and you're buying, let's say lower priced homes and you want to be able to maximize your investment return, a great way to do it is to sell that property with owner financing. And that way you make income on the financing as well as uh, money on the, the, the sale of the property. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my question would be over the time span that you've been doing this, have you noticed an uptick or downtick with, as, as you know, Bill pointed out, difference in rates mm -hmm. on the conventional side. So when rates rise on the conventional side, does seller financing rise as well? Does it follow that? Or is there some other mechanism that it follows? That is a great question. And yes, it actually follows that mortgage availability index chart. Mm -hmm. If you, yeah. if you research for that, that they, they published the mortgage, uh, they, uh, mortgage affordability index and that we see when there's more restrictive underwriting or it's harder to qualify because rates go up and your payment goes up. So it becomes a bigger piece of your income. Any time that happens, when you, we look at the number of notes created, that tends to go up when, when that availability goes down. Yeah. What, what are you seeing the seller finance rates come in at now? <laughs> Everywhere, Wendy. It I is. Mean, like, it crazy? Yes. I mean, I'll see a note that a mom and pop seller created that didn't know any better that charged zero. Oh my yeah. goodness. I know. How can they sell that? How can you sell well, that? Well, they can sell zero? it, but it's a big old discount. Normally on those, we if we want to get an eight or nine percent return or ten percent return, we have to put it in our financial calculator and do a present value time value of money calculation at that rate. It's a big discount. So a lot of times we'll do a partial for them where we'll just buy maybe the next five years of payments. So that discount on that, those payments way out in the future, don't hurt them. So on the other side of the coin, you know, we'll see them that are in the 9% range. Obviously if they're writing them at nine, nine and a half, they are a much better resale value if they do decide to sell. It's better for the holder of the note because they're getting that interest income. I would say the most average we see is probably in that four to five percent range. Yeah, I, I know a lot of still people are saying, well, yeah, it's still decent, yeah. isn't it? 
So I, I see a lot of people, you know, wondering, you know, why would you sell a note if you're getting that kind of return on it? But, you know, in my opinion, you know, if, if whatever your goal is as an investor, if it's to get cash in your hands so you can do more, that's the only way you can do it. You've got to get rid of those notes so you can get that cash, even if it's at a discount yeah. to go and, and reinvest it elsewhere. Hopefully you've gotten, you've made your money on the down payment. Um, yeah, or, you, you didn't, you had had less money in, your yeah. note was for more. Yeah. Cause I mean, like she said, like the 0%, you're like, how on earth can you make money on that? Well, you buy it at 60 cents on the dollar. They're paying a hundred cents on the dollar for the payment. Well, that additional principal Delta comes to you as profit. It's your cash on cash return. So yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. You've it's got a calculator there. I do. I, me yeah. to the test. I saw that's, that. That's, that's a dinosaur. I love those. <laughs> hey, what are you saying now? <laughs> I, I wrote a whole article that said on my blog that said, does this calculator make me look old? <laughs> <laughs> I got the same thing. I got the same version on my phone. Yeah. By the, way. <laughs> the, the one that I own, that's like the one you have in your hand came with a 200 page book to figure out how to use it. <laughs> and for $14, I got the app on the phone and it doesn't tell you anything. About how to use it. <laughs> I have the app also. And if I'm in a pinch somewhere, I'll use it, but I, I don't, it's easy to mistype on the phone. So this yeah. is very tactile. So I could, we have a joke that I could do a party trick that you could blindfold me and I could probably run a calculation on it. <laughs> That's funny. But what, what I was asking about the calculator for, I'm not trying to make you look old. I really had a question on that. <laughs> is, you know, we, we're talking about the 0% financing. Give us an idea of, you know, if you were to buy a note that was a hundred thousand dollar note at 0%, somebody <laughs> wanted to sell it. What kind of a, yeah. you know, what kind of a discount are you looking at? Now I know we're just talking ballpark. Boy, all right. Yeah. Well, first of all, I want to, I want to clarify to say, I would love to buy a property with 0%, but I would never create a note as zero percent right yeah, i right. want my targets about nine but yes we can buy them so let's just say we had a hundred thousand dollar note i'm putting in my calculator no tricks <laughs> no tricks really i am see yeah <laughs> and if it's zero percent and they did 360 months which would be horrible but let's just say they did that <laughs> that would be like 277.78 a month right wow so if you wanted to get a 10% return on that. We're talking 31,653. So Ow. you would never do that, right? So we'd probably right. come in and say, I'm going to take the next, uh, I'm just going to redo this number real quick. I'm going to take the next. So we got 277.78. So 277.78. I might just buy like the next 60 months or something. And if I wanted, say, a 10 yield on that, I could pay them, you know, 13000 That's not the best of examples. Uh, but yeah, that's a big discount. That's why you don't do that. That's right. And that's a, that's a great thing for people to learn mm -hmm. uh, is, is the difference of zero yeah. versus, you know, getting an eight or 9% return. You're, yeah. you're, um, but that it can still be a deal for you as the buyer. Yep. Yeah. And as the seller, you really had made enough money uh, somewhere else. But, you know, the IRS also wants you to charge a certain amount of interest as well. So there's some minimum interest in there. Talk to your CPA. So I would never recommend that. People normally do that when we see that is it's for religious reasons. They don't believe mm. in charging or paying interest. Right. I know I that I, I've seen um, I've seen a lot of seller financing at zero percent but the way they're getting away with that to make money and giving this zero percent is they're charging a lot more for the house than they would normally charge so they're kind of getting their interest rate at the sale price yeah so i know um one thing i wanted to play with today i know you're you're you had a uh theme today what was your theme yes today? you're a good queen it's a queen or princess for the day. Yeah, princess for the day. Princess. So I was going to have a little anti-princess fun here. All because right. When I think of princess, I think of somebody who's entitled, who's not willing to do the work. And maybe that's just my age group. And <laughs> I, I grew up more of a tomboy, not afraid to roll up my sleeves even today. Uh, so I would like to say, 
we all love to be pampered sometimes and taken yeah. care of and felt special. So from that point of view, it's great to be a princess. But when it comes to investing, I don't want people to be a princess. I want to be the princess with a portfolio. Mm. I don't want to be waiting for a prince, right, to come save me because nope, that's what that's you think right. of. And I would argue that men appreciate that too. They don't want to be solely responsible for saving the women financially in their life. They want an equal partner. So Or a sugar mama. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> you guys are gonna. Nobody's saying anything. We're leaving it. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. This is one of Wendy's comments. We all go. Let's just let's just sidestep over here. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where she gets it from. <laughs> no, so I, I guess I, that's all I'd like to say is you know be be the princess with the portfolio when it comes to your finances. Make sure that you're uh, you know saving yourself. And, and building for your financial future as well as your significant other. I love that. I, I love that, you know, yep. um, I, and I love why you're doing the wise women is to show other women that, you know, you can do this. I, I've said for, for many years, real estate has no glass ceiling. There's, there's nothing keeping us down. There's no reason why a female, can't do everything that a male is doing in this business. Um, 100%. In fact, I think we have the upper hand um, in many cases. <laughs> and I've, I've seen it used over and over again. And I, I, um, uh, I, I'm always so encouraged when I see, um, especially single women, um, you know, jump out there and just, you know, take the bull by the horns and not be afraid. We all have fear. That's what people need to understand. I don't care if you're a male or a female. We all have fear in stepping into this business, taking a chance. You know, those yep. zeros can get pretty scary, um, but you have to do it. And 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 I, it's so encouraging to see what you're doing because other women can look around and go, hey, you know, if they're doing this, I can do this too. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I think, you know, my my opinion it comes from you know just a father of three girls and everything like it's typically a little more afraid to fail because it feels like it's harder for women to get back up once they do fail so it can be scary in that that thing but what do you mean harder for us to get back up jonathan I, well no not not you personally it's like the like the society is built where it is much harder for a woman to rise up after failing than a man is. Yeah, that's you know? a good point. So that's good. So point. I think that can be a scary part. And, you know, but you hit the nail on the head. I mean, you just got to get out there and do it. And um, I know, you know, a lot of a lot of women in real estate, like, you know, Tracy and uh, our friend Heather, follow them, take advice from them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very smart people. Wise men listen to wise women. <laughs> <laughs> And I want to thank you too, Tracy, for um, being such a great role model and oh, thank for, you. you know, putting out there what you do with this, this wise women, you're, you're, uh, you might think it's just a ripple in the middle of the lake, but you're causing a tidal wave. Oh, thank and you. I hope so. Yeah. You are. You're changing so many people's lives. Th thank you for doing that. Well, thanks for participating. You know, that that quote you give is definitely inspirational. There is no glass ceiling in real estate investing. So that's true for all of us, men, women, what, where you start in life, what your financial mm -hmm. uh, resources are, your educational background. It's one of the things that draws us all to real estate, whether it's real estate buying or lending on real estate or buying notes on real estate. There's just so many opportunities out there in, in good and bad markets as well. So um, yeah, thanks for having me on the show. It's always fun. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Wendy doesn't like the glass ceiling. She definitely likes the steel roofs though, right? <laughs> Especially if it's on a self-storage facility. That, that's right. <laughs> I like that. So uh, if folks want to get a hold of you, they can go to noteinvestors.com, correct? Yes, noteinvestor.com, Tracy at noteinvestor.com. You'll find us all over the internet. So yeah, please reach out. I definitely answer my emails and communicate. We have some free eBooks on our website, like most people do, a free video series on note investing. So yeah, check that out. And we're doing a little best of notes 2021 where people can actually vote for their favorites in the note business. So it's fun to always participate on that as well. Oh, that's awesome. 
So um, can people buy individual notes from you guys or invest in some sort of a pool of, of some sort? You know, we approach that a little bit different. We, since we do provide training, we are not trying to buy from or sell to or JV with people. We want to just be pure educational. We do buy notes and mostly hang on to them in our portfolio or put them in off with an institutional investor. Um, that's just been our approach to it. But we're happy awesome. to share all our knowledge in, in doing that for 30 plus years. That's right. awesome. Excellent. And it comes back every time. Yes, it does. <laughs> Tracy, thank you so much for, for joining us. All right. Um, Thanks. Folks, we're going to wrap this up. <clears throat> we do have a show coming up at one o'clock as well. And I think the link is in the chat it is. as well. It is. Yeah. Um, we want to thank Tracy again. Uh, this is the Real Estate Investor Show, Hard Money for Real Estate Investors. And as I'm trying to get my teleprompter up here because <laughs> he can't I can't remember the stuff. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Uh, we are Carolina Capital Management. And if you would like to borrow money for real estate investment in the Southeast, go to carolinahardmoney.com and click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, go to the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell and sign up with Wednesdays with Wendy. We will not see you guys next week because we'll be eating turkey and napping. We hope you will be too. <laughs> Take care. <laughs>